I have here a glass of thick water. It looks like it has the consistency of syrup or honey or something, but it's actually just water. What's crazy is how clear this actually is. It looks just like normal water, but look how thick it is. So what's the purpose of a product like thick water? Well, it's actually a really important product for people with a condition called dysphagia, which means you have difficulty swallowing. It's so thick. It's like a pudding consistency. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a taste and see what it actually tastes like. Okay, here we go. Tastes just like water. It's kind of weird, it kind of tricks your brain because you kind of expect there to be a flavor because it's so thick, like it's a shake or a pudding or a yogurt drink or something, but then there's just no flavor to it. I've seen videos online about people trying thick water and they kind of freak out and act like it's the worst thing they've ever tasted, but this isn't actually that bad. It just tastes like water, but it's thicker. Ah. <laughs> On the back of the container, they say that you can try it in a bunch of different fluids. So let's try to make some thick Coke and see what it tastes like. This is already weird. Now I'm gonna wait about 10 minutes for it to thicken. Okay, it also suggests trying it with milk. This is gonna be weird. <laughs> okay, this is now thick Coke. Oh man. <laughs> it literally is almost like a pudding. Try it like a pudding first. Okay, not bad. This is definitely not as bad as the water. It's a little more enjoyable because it has that sweet flavor. It's kind of like a dessert, so you could expect it to be maybe thicker than normal. Okay, now let's try the thick milk. I was worried about this one, but it kind of just looks like a yogurt drink or something. Okay. Hey, that one's not bad. I'd say out of all of them, I like the milk the best. I didn't think these thick beverages were that bad, but let me get another opinion. Thick water. I just want to make sure that it's not contaminated with any chemicals before I drink it. Did you put any like, hydrochloric acid it, it in it? It won't kill you. Is it like drinking spit? <laughs> Ew, that's so gross. <laughs> I'm glad this stuff exists though, because this has actual real use in medicine. So. I know it does. Why don't you try some, oh. some Coke? Here's some thick Coke. I can't. Is that worse than the water? No way. Yeah. That's a yuck. <laughs> Okay, so I guess I liked all the thick stuff more than Joanna. You liked it? Yeah, well I didn't like it, I just didn't think it was that gross. But the thing is, this isn't really the water that's thick. If we look on the back of this product, you can see that there are these flavorless thickeners here, like maltodextrin and xanthan gum. So the water didn't actually get thicker, we just added things to the water to make it thicker. But can you actually make pure water thick? And before we continue, I'd like to thank Kamikoto for sponsoring this video and sending me these amazing handcrafted Japanese steel kitchen knives made with over 800 years of Japanese technology and traditional techniques. Each knife is made by experienced Chinese craftsmen using only Japanese steel. I've personally owned Kamikoto knives for almost a year now, and they're some of my favorite knives and still as sharp as ever. Each knife comes in these beautiful heavy-duty wooden boxes, which makes a great presentation if you give it as a gift. They have an array of products with different blade lengths, and all the blades have a satin finish on the handle that looks amazing. Each Kamikoto knife goes through a rigorous 19-step process that takes several years from start to finish to complete and each knife is individually inspected by a person, and their knives come with a lifetime guarantee. They have a single bevel edge that can cut through meat like butter. They have great customer service as well. Their goal is to make the customer happy and respond to any of their needs. Their knives remain affordable even though the quality is really great because they cut out the middleman and deliver the knife straight to you. These knives look extremely professional. I've used these knives on steak and tomatoes and no matter what it slices through it with no problem. The knives feel heavy duty and I feel like a real chef when I use them. These knives are even used by Michelin chefs around the world. Kamikoto is running a massive holiday sale right now and is offering my viewers an extra $50 off any purchase with discount code ActionLab. 
So go to comicoda.com slash action lab and help support the channel. Now let's get back to our experiment. To try to make pure water thick, we have to first understand what it means to be thick. Thick means that the viscosity is high. Viscosity is the measurement of the fluid's resistance to deformation or flow. Viscosity is highly correlated with temperature. At high temperature, molecules have more kinetic energy, which means they can slide past each other easier. That's why cold syrup flows slow compared to warm syrup. But what about pure liquids that aren't thick to begin with? Do they also get thicker when they cool down? Well, let's try something like ethanol. This is pure ethanol. You can see how easily it flows. It flows about like water. At room temperature, they have very similar viscosities. But what about if we get the alcohol really cold? Ethanol has a really low freezing point, around negative 114 degrees Celsius. So let's get it really cold with liquid nitrogen and see what happens. Look at the liquid nitrogen floating on top of it in this bubble. Look how thick it got, it's like syrup. Alcohol that's this cold is actually really dangerous. With this container of liquid nitrogen, I can easily dunk my hand in it and nothing happens. This is because the Leiden frost effect keeps my hands safe from the extreme temperatures of the liquid nitrogen. So the nitrogen turns to a gas where my hand touches it and that gas insulates my hand from the liquid nitrogen. But for the ethanol, it doesn't create a gas when something like a warm hand touches it. So cold. So it'll just instantly freeze your hand. So I won't be touching this thick alcohol. I really want to touch it, but I'm not going to. It's so weird to see something that was so thin at room temperature suddenly become so thick. It gets so thick because at these low temperatures, the small ethanol chains can't slide past each other very well, especially because it's polar, so the hydrogen bonding can hold the molecules in place more, creating more resistance to flow. I wonder if frozen alcohol can still burn. It on fire, gonna turn out these lights. So the cold alcohol isn't burning. And my table's on fire. But what about water? Well, we all have experience with cold water. It doesn't seem to be that much thicker at cold temperatures compared to warm. But is it actually thicker? Well, I'm gonna try to see if I can see a noticeable difference in viscosity in cold water versus hot water. So I made a long tube that I'm going to drop a metal sphere through. I'm gonna fill it with hot water and then cold water and see if it takes longer to fall through the tube with the cold water compared to the hot. So this will be my starting point, then this will be my ending point down here. Okay, I'm gonna start off with ice water, so this is close to freezing. We got it at around 36 degrees Fahrenheit. One, two, three. The three cold runs were super consistent and looked like this. Okay, now I've got hot water in here. We're at 147 degrees Fahrenheit now. Okay, one, two, three. Overall, with three hot runs and three cold runs, I get that the three hot runs were 3.25, 3.25, and then 3.3 seconds. That means that on average, the ball fell through the hot water a fifth of a second faster than the cold water. It doesn't seem like a lot, but you can see when I motion stabilize the footage and compare the hot ball to the cold ball, you can see how on every run, the ball in the hot water always gets ahead of the one in the cold water. So cold water really is thicker than hot water. But you don't need a setup like this experiment to see that water gets thick when it's cold. You can actually just hear the difference. For example, I'll play you two different clips and try to guess which one is hot water being poured and which one is cold.
So why were you able to tell the difference? The first one was the hot water and the second one's the cold water. Well, one of the main reasons is that the cold water is thicker than hot water. So different vibration frequencies are heard because of how the water flows and how the air bubbles move through the water at different viscosities. So pure water can be thick. Since water is such a simple small molecule, cold temperatures don't make it as thick as something that's bigger and longer like alcohol. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, remember to hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time.